Hi, this is Tony Stratus from Full Scoop Marketing, and you're listening to the SME Stories Podcast. You are now listening to the next great small business podcast. Welcome to the SME Stories Podcast, where it is all about small businesses in Canada. And here's your host, Ken Alfred. Hey, everybody. Thanks for downloading the show. We got a great episode today with Tony Stratus. Tony Stratus is a motivated marketing professional with many years of experience in various industries, including food, construction, and entertainment. Tony is the co-owner of Full Scoop Marketing Incorporated, a virtual boutique marketing agency. She leads their cross-functional team from a marketing operations perspective to ensure everyone is doing their part to get things done well and on time. Now, Tony and her partner have over 20 years of experience in the marketing space. Before they started Full Scoop Marketing, they actually worked on big companies like McDonald's, Extreme Pita, Boston Pizza, Swish LA, Home Hardware, and Nando's. So we know that they got their experience in there. What I love about their website too, is that they use the tagline beyond vanilla. Now I like vanilla. They like vanilla ice cream as well, but it's not the vanilla they're talking about. So they really focus on catering their strategies, their marketing strategies for every single client that they work on. So I think we're gonna have a great show today and a lot of interesting stories. So sit back and absorb. All right, guys, we have Tony Stratus, Full Scoop Marketing. Tony, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Ken. How are you? Good for our third take, but absolutely not too bad. So let's try this again. So full scoop marketing. Yes. What is your story? Okay. So I am business partner one of two. Uh, my business partner's name is Paula Stevenson. And we started our business shortly after working together at a brand called Smokes Boutinery. Uh, we worked there on the marketing team. She was my boss and we clicked. When we went our separate ways for a little while and we reconnected, um, she asked me if I wanted to start a business with her and I didn't hesitate. I said, yes, let's do it. Um, never thought it would be something in my path. Um, I was never that kid with a lemonade stand at the end of the street. I uh, never thought I would own my own business, but here we are. You just never know where things will take you. Wow. So that's, that's really good, actually. So it's, it's funny. So you said you actually were working together under smoke scrutinery. You, you just, you separated for whatever reason, whether it's, you know, mm -hmm. looking for another job or whatever. You came back and said, hey, Let's start a business together. You're like, yeah. Okay. Good to know. So, how long has Full Scoop Marketing been around? Uh, so, fun fact yesterday was our sixth anniversary, June 12th. So, six years in business together, which is crazy. It feels like 100 years and one year all at the same time. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that, that, that's great. So, what basically makes your firm so successful? Oh, that's a really good question. I still totally get imposter syndrome about what I'm doing. Um, I think that actually is part of what makes us successful. It's we're not overly cocky. Um, we're very friendly and approachable and solution driven. Um, so it's not like if if you don't have the money to work with us, we don't shut the door on you. We, if you really need the help and we see potential, we're going to make it work. Um, so we don't have a price menu or anything like that. We approach every client um, with a unique and fresh perspective and go into it with how can we make success together with a budget that works. So a lot of the bigger agencies, they don't even talk to you unless you've got at least 100K to spend with them. Uh, we're just not that type of industry. So we're fill, filling that need um, between the big brands and the small businesses. Well, that's really good, actually. And when you said 100K, I'm like, really? That's what the big agencies you charge? Some of them. Yeah, the one that I worked at, it was really discouraging. And one of the reasons why it was easy for me to say yes to starting this business. Uh, because I think, you know, when you think about it, you know, for a lot of small businesses, they're just trying to get their name out there. So, you know, trying to work with someone and the, and the first thing that you, you say, okay, I need to increase my marketing. So you try to, you, you know, you decide to maybe go to, let's say, a bigger firm because, you know, they're at least more reliable because you don't know about some mom and pop shops. You don't know if they're stable enough to handle you. And the next thing you know, they say, absolutely, we can help you out. No problem. You just need a $100,000 retainer. <laughs> yeah, depending. I mean, I might be exaggerating a little bit, but it just is a really quick example at the agency that I used to work at. Um, I had a client that I would have considered a large client, um, but it was project based and they, their budget was 10K. And my boss said, no, we don't want to be with them. And that was like, uh, I'll do that job for 10K. Yeah. <laughs> so and then it was just like leaving money on the table and not supporting the community and so full scoop is completely opposite of that. Well, I like that. You know, you, you'll listen to everybody. You'll try and work with as many people as you can. 
and to really help out the small business owner. And hell, that's what we're all about here, right? It's all about the small business owners. So how yeah. big is your current team? I know there's you and there's Paula. Is there anyone else? You have like some uh, staff that you either contract out that helps you out? Yeah, we do. Um, something I'm really proud of is we have an employee, full-time employee. Her name is Stephanie and she's amazing. She helps us manage all of our accounts as well as um, another thing that I think sets us apart is we really like to support the freelance community and other entrepreneurs. So we're all about collaborations. We work with maybe three or four different designers, graphic designers, photographers, videographers. We've got a virtual assistant on staff, which is fantastic. She's Amazing. She's like a robot. Her name is Crystal. <laughs> um, and yeah, but one of the other things that differentiates us from some of the other guys is when a project comes our way, we've got a whole roster of talent to pick from so we can choose the right person for the right creative project. Okay. And, and I guess you're keeping it fairly lean, right? You're not trying to hire all these like collaborators at the same time. It's like you're kind of like on a roster. And depending mm -hmm. on the project, depending on the needs of the project, you'll then you'll reach out to them and then there's that i guess predetermined rates that you're going to be going with these guys and stuff like that right yeah that's exactly right there there's definitely a few key people that we have on our team on retainers with us like we've got a content creator we've got a virtual assistant we have a graphic designer like those are our people that we have available to us monday to friday and then you know, for other larger projects a, a video shoot a photography shoot or an ad campaign we pull in the extra people that we need. Excellent. So now I ask this for a lot of owners. So in terms of actual growth that you're expecting to see, so how is full scoop marketing? What, what are your sales and profit growths you have for this year? Or maybe that you expect to see in the next couple of years? That's also a really good question. And um, we kind of are flying by the seat of our pants most of the time. I do plan out annual projections, but I haven't really gone past that. And now you're kind of triggering me to maybe do that. That's what I'm here <laughs> for, Tony, to make everyone think. <laughs> yeah, totally. So our goal is a like, minimum of 10% increase year over year. Um, we've been super fortunate and be able to achieve that and more over the last couple of years. And uh, this year in particular with the roller coaster ride that we've been on, um, our business grew quite significantly, about 30%. So hopefully we can maintain that for next year. Wow, that's, that's great. So are you actually going to expand out into either adding more people or are you maybe going to get your own uh, you know, brick and mortar location? What, what, what are you thinking? You know, brick and mortar was something that I thought I wanted. Um, I had this vision of an ice cream shop with our office in the back, filling out that full um, ice cream brand. But as things have progressed, I really see the value in a virtual business and keeping that overhead low for our clients. I'd much, much rather invest in people than location. Yeah, you know, you know what always scared me, um, Tony, when, when it comes to thinking about a brick and mortar store is, is the L word, lease. Yeah. Just thinking, oh, my God, if, if, if God, knock on wood that, we're, that we have another pandemic, thank God, hopefully we don't. But mm -hmm. my God, the people who... In terms of all the small businesses that could not really do anything, they had to shut down, but still had to pay that lease payment. Yeah. Up. Now, the government at that time did offer some kind of, you know, re, you know, relief for it, but you're only covering a certain amount. Right. And I think they tried to work with the lenders to try to make it. But from what I understand from some of the small businesses I chatted with to actually apply to get that rent relief or that lease, whatever you want to call it, that's that relief from the government to ease into that. It was very hard. Like there wasn't yeah. a lot of easy, you know, you, could, you couldn't fill it out properly or I don't know, but I'm kind of glad you mentioned that. Uh, so you're like, okay, invest in people. That is yeah. actually true. Unless you and Paula can literally do everything. It's kind of nice to have people that you can rely on. I like to think that I could do everything, but physically I can't. <laughs> no, I mean, you, we can try if we had a, a possibility to, to freeze time. Absolutely. Yeah. So you can yeah, get stuff done, amazing. but that's not going to happen. So, okay. For freezing time and cloning, whichever one comes first, I'm in. <laughs> not that we're endorsing cloning people, just making sure that people hear that. So, <laughs> all right. So when it comes to, let's say your virtual, because I, I think for some places they know that they think of the brick and mortar. And now that mm -hmm. people are more doing more virtual offices or let's say remote home offices. So what do you yeah. find is like your biggest expenditure uh, running your firm right now? Oh, definitely people, including Paula and myself, right? Like we need a, a salary. So payroll is a good chunk of change. And then another big part of what we do is um, 
like I said before, is working with freelancers. So our graphic designers, our photographers, our videographers, all those people are a big expense. But otherwise, you know, most of our expenses are cell phone, internet. Um, we do have insurance and all that fun stuff that you need to have with the business. So yeah, most of it goes towards our people. Oh, and, that, and, that's, and that makes sense, right? Because they're going to be help, help you. You're kind of overseeing it. And they're the ones that are going to be delivering the actual, you know, project or deliverable for the actual client. So that, that's really good to hear. So, but what yeah. about certain expenses that uh, I guess most people don't think that you guys are actually paying for? That's a good question. Oh, you know what? Um, software. So Zoom, as an example, <laughs> <laughs> we've got that annual fee. Drawbox is another program we use. A really big one for us is Sprout Social. So that's a tool that we use to schedule and analyze and come up with content. It's a really great platform that we just started using this year. Sprout Social. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So I know you guys are all about social media as well, even though this is not a social media channel or a podcast, sorry. So how important is social media to your business right now? And currently, what tools are you guys using in full scoop? Social media is super important, but I'll be honest with you, because we also offer that service to a lot of small businesses, ours kind of falls to the wayside, which is unfortunate, but you know, it's one of those things where you're working in your business instead of on it. And we're, we're working through those growing pains to, to find the resources so that we can make time to do our own social media. But we're, we are a business that operates mostly and our growth has mostly come from word of mouth. So we think of social media as our portfolio. So as long as we're posting fairly regularly and showcasing all the different things that we do, uh, we feel good about our social media and focus most of our social media energy on our clients. Mm, interesting. Excellent. So all right, let's talk about the industry right now. So okay, Tony, you, you guys are the experts. So what, in your opinion, what is the state of the current marketing industry and what's your opinion on where it's going? Oh, the state of the current marketing industry. I think that marketing is one of those things that, you know, when I was growing up, it wasn't necessarily a job that I knew I could do. I didn't know it was something I could go to school for until I was in university. And um, now I think it's a very hot topic. It's everybody knows about marketing and thinks they can do it themselves. And there's a lot of competition. Yeah, I think it's, 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 uh, I think I had a previous, one of my previous guests, actually, he also runs a, he runs more of a digital one. And he was saying that, yeah, a lot of people, they almost just seem to rely just on social media only without building mm -hmm. the actual relationships that, uh, you know, that you should be developing as, as a firm, right? Because I think, like, oh, as long as I have like a, an Instagram or a Facebook or a Twitter account and or a Pinterest account, then everyone's just going to come flooding in. But apparently that's yeah, not the that case, though, is it? <laughs> Definitely not the case. The same with websites. People think that they just need to build a website and then they're good. They just sit and wait for the sales to roll. And unfortunately, it's just not the case. Something that I think about quite a lot, and I, I can't credit the original source because I just can't remember, but somebody posted and asked the question, what would you do if Facebook no longer existed? Would your business survive? So Social media is super important. It's where a lot of eyeballs are right now, but it can't be your everything. Just like during the pandemic, when we realized that there's certain businesses that just wouldn't be able to survive a pandemic, you need to pandemic proof your business and uh, basically just prepare for any sort of, I don't want to say crisis, I don't want to make this a negative interview, but you know what I'm saying. Like people, you need to invest in your own data and your own resources, like your, your website and your email uh, and even just your personality and make sure people know who you are. You cannot rely completely on social media. It's there to augment and to showcase. Hey you, do you need a voiceover? Well, look no farther. Northway Capital Group has your answer. Commercials and explainer videos, AVR and voicemail, health and wellness, corporate training and e-learning, announcements, documentaries and biography. Contact us on social media or email us at northwaycapitalgroup at gmail.com. Exactly. It's there to kind of show off. It's, it's, you can't assume people are just going to like you and trust you. You really got. And plus, you need, you need some type of marketing and also some advertising as well to actually point people in your direction. Mm -hmm. Because it's not like, you, like you said, you, you, you have, a, you have a, a website, you have all these social medias. But if no one knows that you exist... You can have the prettiest pages and, and sites, but if no one knows that you're there, you know, what's the point, right? So th that's totally. actually, so, so what is your current, what do you think the, the common misconception is in the marketing industry? Mm, there's a lot. 
<laughs> we, well, let's see. We got time. So go ahead. I'm looking at my watch. Even though I'm not wearing a watch, but okay, go ahead. Yeah. Let me think about it. I mean, a common misconception is that um, people think that a logo is their brand. Um, when your logo was just a piece of your brand, I think there is a lot of opportunity for people to educate themselves about what it really means to have a brand and brand guidelines and that story to tell. Your logo really is, it's like your display picture on Instagram. Like it's important, but it's not the be all and end all of your marketing. Just those two things, just logo? You know, I mean, keep going. You can lift off a couple more because, you know, the part of this, the podcast too here, Tony, is that especially for those that say they want to get into the marketing industry, like we'll do what you guys are doing right now, you know, yeah. just some, something that, that they can educate them to say, okay, when I started my business, what should I think about? And so hearing some of the misconceptions that people might think mm -hmm. so that when they actually start to try to get those clients and they're hitting these barriers, it's more like something, oh yeah, Tony mentioned this. So let me just remember... If I hit this, I know exactly what to look for. So, so continue. Yeah. Just lift off a couple of more. Okay. I'm just going to have to think about it. I'm going to probably think of a hundred as soon as we're done this call. <laughs> <laughs> so we have logo. Maybe, right? Yeah. Maybe not so much a misconception, but a definite marketing no-no. And it's very tempting is buying followers and buying likes on social media. Mm. Um, people get pretty obsessive around the number of followers and likes that they have buying followers well it might look like you're successful in reality the number of followers you have doesn't matter what really matters is the quality of your followers and that there's real human beings behind those numbers that are engaging with your content and doing business with you so that's a really big one people need to give themselves time to build up their followers and they should not discount the fact that they only have 200 followers can you imagine if you had 200 people in your house right now well let's see here, a lot. here in the alfred mansion that we live in <laughs> that absolutely but no i hear what you're talking about but yeah right? it, it goes back to that point that i would rather have you know 10 followers that actually buy from me versus like a thousand followers where only a couple of people buy from me yeah, it's just, it's just a, it's more of like an ego thing. It's more like peacocking to show how much it, it is. you have. Right. And yeah, as much as sometimes you might want to think, oh, if I can hit that 10,000 follower mark or that 1000 follower mark. But if no one's but if you're not getting any engagement or generating any business from that, then it's just, you know, it's just window dressing. It doesn't really mean anything. Right. So yeah. that's, that's good to hear. So we got yeah. we had logos. We had buying followers. Was there anything else that you that stick, sticks out in your mind? Yeah, so last one I will bring up is a conversation around print. Um, and the the phrase that people like to throw out there is print is dead. It's not. It's not dead. It's actually really picking up speed again. Uh, and I've got a whole bunch of flyers sitting all around me here because um, it's becoming really important to give your audience something tangible to hold on to. Because the internet and the online world is so competitive, we're seeing like, I don't know what the number is, but let's just throw a thousand messages in five minutes. Uh, it's so hard for your brain to actually recall any of that information unless you save it or send it to yourself or perform some sort of action. So to expect that people to do something with your social media ad without doing anything else, it takes a really long time. Whereas with print, you're putting something in someone's band that hold on to put on their fridge or their dining room table and go back to you and your brain there's studies have shown actually recalls the information um a lot better and a lot longer yeah no you know it's, it's interesting though because i know when i get flyers like that too i think 90 i know for most people they say oh i just chuck it in the recycling bin and i said you know what i do that too but you know the difference is i will actually look through Every piece of flyer that's there, even if it's not even a service I'm looking for, it's just right. that to me, it's, it's maybe it's just a quirk of mine is that I respect the effort of them trying to put something out there. So I'll at least give them that respect to at least look at it. You know, it's like, oh, excellent. 25% off, uh, you know, Persian rug cleaning. <laughs> I don't have a Persian rug. But thank you but for good trying. Good to know. Yeah, good to <laughs> yeah. know. Good to know. So, no, that, that's interesting that you hear about that. So, is there any other thing that uh, people don't know about the marketing industry that uh, that they would be shocked if uh, if they suddenly got in the space of marketing? They would be shocked. 
that's not easy. I think a lot of people think marketing is easy. Content creation is easy and fun and you have such a cool job. Um, and it's an insane amount of mental energy that you are giving out to the world every single day. And it's constantly changing. Not just social media, just the advertising and marketing world in general is so much to keep up with. And it, it's constantly evolving. Like if you're not continually educating yourself on what's going on in the market itself, but then also in the marketing industry, you will so quickly will fall behind. Yeah, I think it's, I think also too is that I always joke that since I, I used to want to get into marketing or advertising when I was a kid, and it was because I think a couple of my I'm going to date myself, but a couple of my favorite TV shows was Who's the Boss and Full House. <laughs> So when nice. you saw the characters there that worked for an advertising company and they were like going through this whole creative process of trying to, you know, come up with this campaign for whether it's a car, or whether it's a country or whether it's some new device, or new product. I'm like, wow, people get paid to come up with stuff like that. That's cool. And even though back then and my kids hate it today, they hate commercials. But I was like, mm -hmm. wow, I can get involved with something that people generally don't like. <laughs> who doesn't like that but you know it's actually a very interesting space but it's not as easy and i think especially too when you think about nowadays if someone says well, what's marketing they might say oh Mad Men, right so you guys do mm -hmm. like the whole the big boards and the wearing the you know the power suits and then smoke it well you know most people don't smoke cigarettes anymore but uh, i think some of the, they feel that that's that's what it is and maybe mm -hmm. it is in some cases but that's not yeah. what you guys do right you guys are a little bit no. different Definitely. Yeah. And that, the point about the how to describe what it is, is my niece, she is uh, actually turning eight years old on Friday. Happy uh. birthday, Ava. She asked me, she's like, what do you do? What's marketing? So to make it simple for an eight-year-old, I said that I, you know, the commercials you see on YouTube. And she said, yeah, I'm like, I help businesses make those. She's like, oh, okay. She's like, so you're the ones that <laughs> I'm trying to hit the that. skip ad thing. <laughs> And then she I, said that. <laughs> like, skip I, I don't like those. I don't like the commercials. <laughs> but say, hey, but but it provides a service because sometimes you're not even going to know about a product or service until you see that stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, as annoying as it might be for some people, especially if you're watching some hour long thing and they just happen to throw a commercial almost every, you know, 10 minutes of that recording, it can drive you nuts. But it has a purpose. And you know what? People pay good money for that. And to also make it look professional. You know, it's, it's a credit to what you guys do because, it, like you said, it's not easy. You, people see the end product, they'll be like, oh, they must have easily come up with that idea. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the recording didn't take that long. You know, so it, oh, yeah. it's not like that. Now it's time for tips from the pro. All right. So here, let's, we're now going to talk about, uh, this is the tips from the pro segment here. So this is now okay. people who say, I want to start a marketing firm as well. Tony, let me know what your thoughts are on certain things. So, all right, question number one here. What do you, in, Tony, in your opinion, what are the more profitable niches in the marketing space that maybe a new person might want to consider? Niches, that's it. Um, so I like to say that Full Scoop is industry agnostic. A lot of people have told us you need to focus. Got to focus. You'd be more successful if you focus. But we've really found success in jumping into a bunch of different industries and I think that partly is my own personality and wanting to learn about lots of different things and have every day be different um, I do think that there is an opportunity for somebody else to go in and pick a particular niche the construction industry is one of those industries that I think people forget about and need marketing and advertising so that's one that I would definitely suggest somebody get into we do have a couple of construction clients um and it they they have money to spend they just don't know how to spend it good problem to have almost right but uh, yeah but yeah no like that's that's an interesting one to is it do the marketing niche is interesting because i would have never thought that that was going to be potentially a niche to really go in whether it's like a handyman service or you know yeah like or any subcontractors that do like the trades work that's something that you can get into like it reminds mm -hmm. me of when i was one of my past episodes was in the was in the makeup and hair industry and mm -hmm. uh, i asked her what are some profitable niches? And she's like, well, you know what some of the niches are. I said, what? Funeral homes? And I was like, funeral homes? I didn't even think about stuff like that. So yeah. these little things that uh, most people don't even realize, because I think people, like you said, they, they look in a marketing firm, I have to offer everything. But that doesn't necessarily mean you should, right? If there's 
you know, just, no. just to do it for the sake of, it doesn't make sense. If you cannot do it well, steer clear with that. So if you, if you can't do like big campaigns and you're only focused on like a certain budget of smaller campaign, then maybe that's what you focus on first before you start reaching out to the medium to large businesses that are there. So that's interesting. Excellent. All right. How do you mm -hmm. personally educate yourself to stay up to date within the marketing industry? Um, so one thing is honestly is enrolling in courses. So something that um, I did, it was a few years ago now, and I want to actually enroll again is uh, enjoying the U of T continuing education program for digital marketing. So that was a perfect place to learn from professors who work in the industry or own their own businesses, not regular keep up, keep up with specific things like search engine optimization was one course. And uh, at the time, is Facebook was another course. And I forget what the other one was. Well, content, create content was another one. So directly enrolling in courses is a great opportunity. Another way to stay up to date with marketing is just really networking. So talking to other business owners, don't be afraid to talk to other people. Like for me, other people who own marketing agencies, there's one particular person based in Ottawa that we, we talk all the time. We keep each other up to date on what's going on. We share um, when we're having a bad day or we're having a good day. So keeping a close network of people that are like you is also a really good one. I need reading. So I have a few different email newsletters that help me stay up to date and not necessarily just with marketing, but like one of them, it helps me stay up to date with what's going on with streaming in particular, because it's, there's another realm of our world that's constantly changing. There's new ones popping up. This one's buying that one. And this is happening in China and they're doing this in Europe. So that's also something that I do. Do you have a small business story to share? The SME Stories Podcast is looking for entrepreneurs to share their tales of success, failure, and everything. If you're interested in being a guest on our show or know someone would be a great fit, please contact us at northwaycapitalgroup at gmail.com. That's northwaycapitalgroup at gmail.com. All right, excellent. And so let me ask you this question. This is more on the digital marketing space. Out of all the different social media platforms and types of things, whether it's content creation or anything, which do you see as the one that's going to be most like the dinosaur that won't be around as longer, if that makes any sense? Like they will go extinct? Yeah. Is there any particular theme that you see within the space that you work in that, you know, it's, it's okay for now, mm -hmm. but long term wise, I don't know if this is still going to be around. Oh, that's a hard question. So I'll tell you something. TikTok, when did it start? Like five years ago? Maybe, maybe not so much, but I didn't think TikTok was going to stick. <laughs> and I'm clearly able to admit that I was wrong. I was very wrong. TikTok is stuck and it's getting big. And if you are on TikTok, you need to consider being on TikTok at least to start just scrolling and seeing what people are doing and what other business owners are doing. Um, but anyways, I think that like Facebook would be like the most obvious one, but they're just such a big company with so much money that I think that they will find a way to keep. Yeah. Like it's going. funny, funny for me. That's that apparently, and maybe this dates me is that when I, when I speak to younger people, they least likely use Facebook. They mm -hmm. like the Instagrams. They love looking at the pictures. They like the TikToks and maybe they even like, I don't know about Twitter and stuff like that, but but yeah, I can see it that it, I don't know how Facebook is so big as well. I don't know if they can just, I can see them pivoting to yeah. something, right? If it's not Facebook, the social media thing, they'll come up with Facebook something that's yeah. going to bring people back. So yeah, because I know that's a hard question because <laughs> it's super I, hard. you know, like I thought back then when Skype first came out, I'm like, oh, they're going to be around forever. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> around, but what are we talking on? We're not talking yeah. on Skype. Yeah. Right? So interesting. Good to know. And, and just so well, in your opinion, then what makes a good marketing agency from a, so what separates a great agency from a good agency? The, the people yeah. for sure. Um, it's really a people business because everything that we do comes from our brains. Um, all the ideas and the, the copy and the image is it all so it has to be conceptualized. Like somebody has to be figuring out what the strategy and the vision is literally like how it will look um and sound so without good people or great people you'll just be a status quo average marketing firm yeah i mean 
It is in the people, right? And I think, and, and I find that people leave companies not be, maybe in some cases it is maybe an opportunity, but if it's a toxic work environment, that's when you lose people, right? When, my, one of the last firms I worked for when I left and I said, I love the people, I just hate the work, right? And it's, it's true that uh, if it's not a money thing, it's a, it's a people thing, right? And the people are the ones that are going to drive the business unless you, like you said, we talked about earlier, unless you're literally doing everything. <laughs> Right. But if you're trusting people, but if you're micromanaging them, if you're not giving them the freedom to expand and to really help out more, because there'll be some staff that they're okay doing just that task that they're assigned to do. But then yeah. you got to balance that with people who say, well, I want to be able to do more. I want to contribute more. Yeah. Right. And you want to try to help those people expand and, and help out in many ways, shape, or form. Right. So excellent. So, all right. I just wanted to start my own business there. Uh, Tony, what should be the first piece of equipment I buy? Equipment to buy? I don't know if there's any specific equipment, but the, I think the first thing you need to do is sit down with somebody that you respect and look up to to just share your idea with and get that seal of approval that you're not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got something. But have, it's really important that it's somebody you respect and look up to. Yeah. No, I think that's a great idea. And I think I mentioned this in a few episodes before is that I think when people make the mistake is that when you, someone wants to start their own business, you know, they make the mistake of going to loved ones first mm -hmm. and they're going to get either two reactions and they're going to come from either end, either one, they're going to say, what are you talking about? That is the dumbest. I wouldn't say they do it. So basically the dream killers. Right? Yeah. But then you got the other side of people who really don't know anything about what you're talking about, but they're like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. You can probably make a business out of that but they're not going to be buying your product or service. So I think what you just said is what I try to advise people as well is yeah. find, like you said, whether it's a mentor or find a business professional that you can say, here is what I'm thinking mm -hmm. and let them, you know, pick it apart and say, okay, this stuff is good. I think you can work with this. Here is the stuff though, that I think you might need to revisit or revise because yep. this is the part that's missing. And then, then you kind of go in there because they have no vested interest in you anymore, right? Like they're, you're, they're not trying to kill your dreams, but they're not trying to give you this inflated thing that you're going to be, it's going to be easy. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really good thing you just talked about. So last yep. question, last question on this uh, tips from the pro, what is your best strategy to deal with difficult clients? Oh, that's where Paula comes in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Tony doesn't deal with, with difficult people, guys. So just <laughs> let you know. Well, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I mean, I learned a lot from her. I'm really fortunate that she she is um, a mentor and somebody that I look up to and has a little bit more experience dealing with people than I do. So, you know, when there is a difficult situation, it's definitely a collaborative effort. It takes practice to sort of um, not let it hurt you personally. <laughs> and she's really good at it. Excellent. So, <laughs> excellent. So here. Okay. All right, let's talk about the personal side of Tony Stratus. So, Tony, what's your story? Oh, my story. It's hard talking about yourself, but this is this is good practice. So, I am a, a self-taught marketer. I went to this uh, university for um, English. My I have a bachelor of arts in high school. I just knew either by the pressure of my parents or my own actual ambition that I wanted a university degree. But I had no idea what, like, what for or what I wanted to do with it. And I really enjoyed reading and writing. So English degree is what I ended up with. My last year of university, I was bartending at a Boston pizza and sort of the same conversation in my head about what the heck am I going to do now? And I, um, I applied for a job with the franchisee of that Boston Pizza. It was a, a role called Community Relations Coordinator. So that was my very first marketing job. Grassroots level, all about supporting the local community and being a part of events and fundraisers and did a little bit of advertising. Started the, the first Facebook page for that location when they uh, started rolling out Facebook for businesses. And then from there... Just worked in a few different places. I am a big fan of the food and beverage industry and call myself a, a home cook or a, a home chef. No real training or anything like that, but I really love to cook and try new things. And, um, you know, because it's not enough just to have my own business. I also have an, another side hustle in the works uh, and I make uh, custom sugar cookies for friends and family. Wow. Yeah. Good to hear. Maybe yes. I'll need that for my kid's birthday coming up in August. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Let me know. 
I would love to make them their birthday cookies. <laughs> I have a son. He is one year old, one years old. And that was a whirlwind to, to figure out managing a business, which is my baby, and then having the actual baby come into my life. But it's it's been good. Really supportive team at Full Scoop and clients as well, which is great. I love ice cream and so does Paula, which is why we named our brand Full Scoop Marketing. I know. I love the name. I love the ice cream too. Right? That Vanilla was actually one of my favorite flavors, actually. And, oh, really? Uh, yeah. But you know what? The one I think took over it, it's the Jamocha Almond Fudge from Baskin Robbins. Mm. For some reason, I don't know what it is. So at, yeah. Excellent. So what was your family like when you decided to make the decision to start your own business? Were they fully supportive? Were they a bit scared for you? Because, you know, they know that, oh, wow, if they're not entrepreneurial, then it's hard to tell a person who's not entrepreneurial that you're going to become an entrepreneur, right? So how so, did your family react to it? Supportive. Definitely supportive. Uh, my family, my dad in particular, when I was working on another brand as a marketing manager, he actually would tell me, he's like, why don't you just do what you do like as a contractor on the side, like start your own business. And um, something I always thought about, but never really bit the bullet. And Paula kind of pushed me to do it. Um, so having my dad in the back of my head telling me that I could do it was definitely helpful. And then when I did start the business, so he was definitely supportive. He was in and out of contracting um, and full-time work throughout his career. So to him, it was a no-brainer. Um, so yeah, my family was supportive. I have a sister and a brother as well. And um, I think that they knew I was going to do it. I think you could just tell when I told them, like, it's happening. This is what I'm doing. Um, so they weren't going to tell me not to do it. I do think that if I were to go back, they probably were all bickering on the side around, like, whether I was going to be successful at it or not. But yeah, I know that they're all super proud of me now. Hey, do you need an error-free website? Do you need transcription that's accurate and on time? Would you like to remove noise from your video or audio recording? Do you need a spokesperson for your business? If so, we can help. At Northway Capital Group, we are happy to announce that we are now providing website testing services, audio transcriptions, and audio cleanup, as well as spokesperson services. We would love to help you on your next project. Contact us for more information at northwaycapitalgroup at gmail.com. That's great. It's great to hear. So, yeah, so obviously these next questions, and we're almost going to wrap this up here on the rapid fire one thing as well, are very more lighthearted, as you can kind of tell, uh, versus all the serious business type stuff <laughs> about the industry. So what has been the funniest story that you guys have had running your business so far? A funny story? Yeah. I, honestly, I don't know. There's so many things that happen all the time that are funny. But um, nothing sticks out, eh? Whether it's... Yeah. So I'm totally blanking on it. That's okay. No problem. How about this? A couple a couple more questions and then we'll hit the rapid fire after this. What would your 15-year-old self think that you'd be doing today? Not this. Really? <laughs> no, what, what, definitely what, what not. What were you planning at 15 you think you're going to be doing? Uh, you know what? I probably thought that I was going to be a waitress or a server. That was okay. something that I always wanted to do. I did not seeing myself too old in the future um i just pictured myself working at a restaurant making tips D do you know what mine was tony my thing when i was 15 i thought i'd be working at a blockbuster video and i was gonna that was gonna be my career well we would have gone along yeah love go <laughs> so ambitious friday something about fridays <laughs> Friday yeah. after school, Friday after work, whatever. You go to the Blockbuster, you try to find a video or a DVD, but now, you know, apparently there's still one left and I don't know where it is. But uh, yeah. that I thought was my dream job because I was like, man, I could just watch movies all day and all this sort of stuff, you know, funny stuff. So, all right. Now you mentioned you had a son and I'm sure you have a social life as well. So for a small business owner, how do you balance the work and the life and everything? Oh, it's definitely hard. There's days that are really, really challenging. I'm really fortunate to have some support uh, for my mother-in-law. Um, that's where my son is right now at our house. And um, like being a little bit more fluent and flexible with my time, like that nine to five isn't really a thing for me anymore. I get up with my son every morning and um, my time is dedicated to him. And then the remainder of the day, there's a little bit of a juggle between me and my husband. And then I often will work in the evenings as well, just to, to get through what I need to get through. 
make sure my clients know that I'm there for them. So just being really fluid and flexible is a really important part of balancing and that I'm a big fan of Outlook and iPhone calendar. It's just scheduling things in, blocking things off, giving me space to focus. And the last thing I'll mention is communication is a huge piece. <laughs> yeah, like with everybody, but particularly my husband, if we we are in the same house, but we'll be texting all day, figuring out what's next and what meeting we have coming up and who needs to look after the boy <laughs> at yeah. certain times. It, it's funny with uh, you mentioned that because first of all, a couple of quick stories there. My son, actually, he's, uh, he's about to be turning eight this year and I have a daughter who'll be turning 10 this year. Mm. And one time my son came up to me because he always wants me to play with him. And of course, I try to make as much time as I can. But when I tell him, okay, I have to work on the podcast, he's like, dad, are you trying to become famous? <laughs> yes, son. Yes. Uh, apparently I am, right? But uh, it's it's another thing that he mentioned. I would say, well, I'm doing all this to hopefully, you know, make some extra money that we can, you know, give them stuff. Right? I think yeah. not that I wasn't, not that I was deprived by any means, but you just want to try to have as much as you can for your children and your family. Mm -hmm. So that's always there. But also you mentioned about the calendar apps and stuff. My friends and I, we were joking about this at a party a couple of weeks ago. We were like, if it's not on the Google calendar, it's not happening. It's not happening. So, because I used to play during the initial first part of the pandemic, uh, golf courses were still open, right? They saw to put this weird plastic sheet between the driver and the thing when you're <laughs> on a golf cart, which I found completely ridiculous, but whatever. <laughs> <Not being that>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because there's a, still a gap that you can turn and talk to each other. You're like, oh, what did you, what, what? Did you, you know, it doesn't make any sense. But uh, before we would always, once a month, we would always go on like a golf course just for, just to try to relax. But now I think everything has evolved. Things are more open now and people are just busier now. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, what are we going to do golf? What are we going to go golfing again? I don't know. Put something in the calendar and then we can try to schedule it from there, which is nice because you're trying to make time, but also sad when you think about it. Oh, yeah. Because and you can't just call each other up and say, hey, let's go golfing or let's go no. something. You know, it's just... <laughs> And it doesn't work anymore. And I'll tell you, like, if anybody asks me, hey, are we still hanging out today? If it's in the calendar, it doesn't matter. If you give me the opportunity to say no, I'm like, I'm sorry. Let's reschedule. <laughs> because I'm just so busy. If you give me that little opportunity to to reschedule or move things around, I'll take it. Because I, I can always use an extra hour. Exactly. Exactly. So, all right, let's hit the, the fun stuff, the rapid fire stuff. And when you listen to the actual episode, uh, Tony, what you're going to hear is, You'll hear my son introducing some of these segments we did, like the tips from the pro nice. and the rapid fire. And he has some sound effects that he threw in the actual intro. So you'll hear that in the future episode. Now it's time for the rapid fire round. Fun stuff. Okay, rapid fire question here. All right, Tony, if there was a sandwich named after you, what would it be called and what's in it? I'm just, I'm caught, I'm stealing it. Turkey bacon club. Turkey bacon <laughs> that's, club? And what that's would you my call it? Sandwich. I mean, that's what it's called. TBC. TBC? Yeah. We'll call that. We'll call it the Tony TBC. Put on a shirt. Yeah. All right. Put that on a shirt. <laughs> All right. Which word or phrase do you think is the most overused? Obviously. <laughs> Not a fan. Not a fan of obvious. Is it obvious? Is it obvious? Yeah. No, yeah. it wasn't obvious to me. Okay. Yeah. You know, mine is sus. Oh, my me. kids say that to me, dad, that's so sus. I'm like, you're being so sus, dad. I'm like, what? Suspicious. Is that what you mean? Say the whole word. If you mean it, don't, don't give me a breakdown. <laughs> it's like, yeah, your punishment is you're going to be ground. You know what that means? Grounded. Yeah. That's what you're going to be talking about. If you want me to start using talking like that. Jeez. Yeah. All right. What is something that most people are obsessed with that you just don't get? Donuts. Really? What's wrong mm -hmm. with donuts? And there's nothing wrong with donuts. Um, they're just, they're not my favorite dessert. If I'm going to have a treat, it's not going to be a donut. What's your treat? I mean, ice cream. Ice for cream? For sure. I mean, nice. yeah, ice cream for sure. Um, I love just a nice, really decadent slice of chocolate cake. Wow. As well. <laughs> That's actually really cool. I mean, I think one of my favorite ice cream flavors too, I forgot to mention, was roasted marshmallow. That's another one. Oh, that I like. yeah. My homemade one is actually pretty good. Uh, I try to oh, make nice. it. I try to make it natural, but I find when the, those DIY or those recipes you find online that you can make it. The one thing I cannot seem to figure out is that you know once you make it, it's great, and maybe for a day it's fine. But then once it hardens, I feel like you need a jackhammer just to try to get it out. 
<laughs> right? So, because, you know, you're trying to be natural stuff. So you try to put whole ingredients. You don't want to have something with a eyed or a something where you can't even pronounce what the ingredient is. But yeah, I guess some of those things actually keep it somewhat soft when you try to scoop it out versus the natural stuff, which if someone out there knows, please let me know. I want to know of a recipe that you're not going to need a jackhammer to do it. But anyways, so yeah, that's what you said is, is, um, let me see, donuts. Mine is Wordle. I still don't understand it. Apparently a lot mm -hmm. of people like Wordle. Yeah. I don't know what that is, but. I'm I'm into the Wordle. I like the, the word games. I like trying to figure out a puzzle, uh, but I'm not so crazy about it that I have to do it every single day. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So it says, oh, I did it in one try. I'm like, great. So it's not like Hangman where you can kind of guess what the word is, right? Yeah. It's totally random. Yeah. It's totally, totally random. random. You don't get it. So yeah. All right. Now this one was a tough one because I asked the last marketing firm I spoke to a few months ago and he said I was the devil. All right. So <laughs> what would you rather do, Tony? Go uh, 30 days without your phone or an entire life without dessert? Oh, that is hard. I think 30 days without my phone. I'd rather have dessert. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, Ken, you're evil. I'm like, no, this is, think about it this way. I didn't, I said phone. If you have a tablet or a laptop, I didn't say that, right? If I said three days without a device, that's a different story. But he said dessert. Okay. All right. You know what? So I just want to say that just comes down to people again. It, maybe if he had asked me this two years ago, I would say dessert. I'll give up dessert. I need my phone. But now I've got people, I've got team can survive without me for 30 days yeah they, they can besides they can just uh email paula so yeah. then when in doubt just <laughs> escalate issues to paula and she'll be she'll handle it from there so <laughs> all right exactly. last question on this rapid fire round this, been, this has been a great episode so far so what is your theme song and why so My when that theme. when that song hits people know tony's coming I'm really bad at remembering names of songs, but I could tell you that it would most definitely be a No Doubt or her solo Gwen Stefani song. Um, the Sweet Escape, maybe that might be a good one. Nice. Yeah, that just Absolutely came to me. Absolutely good. We'll go with that. We'll go with uh, that. Excellent. I had some people that said, you are my sunshine. And I'm like, <laughs> all right. And then I had other people, you said, oh, it's a, it's a very vulgar song, but it's something like Get Me My Money or something like that. What Ooh, is, yeah. What, whatever works. And someone actually said an old wrestling theme because uh, I used to watch, I still watch a lot of professional wrestling with my kids. So when they mm -hmm. hear certain songs, they know it. But uh, no, that, that, that's great. So any final advice, Tony, for those who are kind of wanting to start in the industry or just who are currently in their operations, what, what other advice would you want to give people? Um. There's so much advice that I want to share with people. I think one of the biggest ones that I well, it would be a nice way to end this episode is just to invest in people and don't be afraid to delegate. Like you don't have to be the person who knows and does everything. It's amazing what happens when you let go a little bit. And I, like for a lot of people, their businesses, their their babies, they're really important. They're their livelihood. They're paying for other people's livelihood. Um, so it's hard to let go and put a little bit of faith and trust in somebody else to get certain things done. But as soon as you do, the relief is amazing. Wow. Good to hear. So final plug, where can people reach out to you, Tony? Definitely check us out on Instagram. We're there every day, even though we might not be posting every day because we're posting for our clients every day. So at full scoop marketing and full scoop.ca. Full scoop.ca. Excellent. So it's great to have you on, Tony. Thank you. Thank you. It was so fun. Thank you for listening to the SME Stories podcast, which is owned by Northway Capital Group. Please follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Northway Capital Group.